Yesterday I was having a conversation with a colleague at work. And after a very long conversation, we got onto the point of values and how intrinsic value, how values are so intrinsic to oneself in terms of their motivation and their passion and their ability. And how values can really get people past the toughest of times. And values can be the reason as to why someone excels to the best of their times. And at the end of the conversation, I'm sure many of you have had something similar. He said to me, he's like, so who are your mentors? You know, I'm sure he must have some mentors because, you know, the job's difficult and whatever. And I said to him, I was like, you know, obviously we go to these pilgrimages very often. There are people who are buried there and we, you know, they're our mentors. He's like, oh, okay, obviously they're dead, so there must be people like them, like the scholars. And I said, yeah, you know, the scholars, they're you know, they're there, they have their, 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 their importance. But no, I'm saying that the people that are actually were buried there, that they're my mentors. I don't get it, you know, they're dead. How are they your mentors? And I know all of us have these kind of moments where we try to explain to people, what is it about the lure of ziyara that makes us want to go year after year, even month after month? Now what is the lure of these individuals that makes us want to come week after week, if not month after month, to their celebrations and their sorrows? And there's something about them. It's their values, perhaps, that shine onto us, that make it addictive to us towards their light. But the crazy thing is, is that as I was saying this to him, I was again reflecting back to my Ziara trip just a month ago and thinking, you know, we see that line so many times that I am a friend with those who are friends with and I am the enemy of those who you are enemies with. I was thinking, you know, this whole time, yes, fine, you're friends with Jabir, I, I will look up to Jabir as well. You're friends with Habib, yes, I'll do ziyarah of Habib when I come to do ziyarah of you, Imam Hussein. Or your friends with Abu Dhar, okay, I will make sure I remember Abu Dhar. Okay, fine, maybe that's the friends part. But I was thinking, okay, who are their enemies? Okay, the ones who killed them, the ones who tortured them. What is it about those individuals that made them the enemies? Fine, they killed them. Fine, they tortured them. But what was it in their values or what was lacking from their values that enabled them to get to such a terrible state in their mindset, in their intellect, that they could commit such a crime. And ultimately, in most cases, it boils down to what? Ego, hunger for power, jealousy of those who had power. Seeing a man like ar rida alayhi salam emerge from a house on Eid day in such humble clothing would tear that heart of the Abbasids. There was something about this ego, this pride and arrogance of these enemies of them that created them to be enemies of Ali Muhammad. And I thought, well, hold on. Are the enemies of Ahlul Bayt those who hold those traits too? Is it just the ones who actually killed each of those infallibles that that's what makes you become an enemy of Ali Muhammad? Is it the act? Just the act? Is that the only thing? Is it maybe saying, well, I'll Billah, that you have detest for Ali Muhammad that makes them an enemy? I don't know. I'm not sure that's what it is. I'm sure that contributes. But maybe there's something more underlying within it. Maybe these very individuals who we go and stand and we do our idna dukhul at their ziyara and we say that I know, O oh Imam, that even though I can't see you with my eyes, I know that you can hear my every voice. I know that you can hear my every word. I know that you'll reply to my salam. And I know that as per Quran, that you are living and not dead because you are a martyr in the way of Allah. Maybe these very individuals, when I'm yearning for their salam, they'll return because it's wajib. But do they see me as a friend or an enemy? 
Do they really want to associate with me, the one who has the same traits of the one that killed them? And that's why I find it so rich that I'm so quick to say, yes, yes, they're my mentors. Yes, you know, come into my grave. I've come to visit you. You'll come to visit me, right? That was the deal. When I read Kamal Ziyara, that's the deal. I come to visit you. You come to visit me. That's how it works. I remember you. I weep a tear for you. You'll come to me. You'll use that tear to extinguish that fire. You'll come to me, right? But at the very same time, I'm enemies with those who you are enemies with as well. And you'd be enemies with those who have these cancers of those souls. And I'm one of those who maybe holds one of those tumors on my soul. Yes, come and cry. Yes, come and lament. Yes, give your money in the way of this cause. For if you are part of a moment that revives one person's life, it is as if you have given life to all of mankind. This is true in a spiritual sense as well. That if someone finds Ali Muhammad through a majlis, through a lecture, through a book that you have contributed to, you are part of it, of course. But if you're also their very enemy due to the, the tumor on your soul, then maybe they have a decision to make. Maybe that very person knocking on their dharih, maybe that very person beating that chest is the one who Ahlul Bayt see as an enemy because I've not corrected that same vice that their killers had. Use these tears tonight to extinguish that tumor from your soul. Use that feeling tonight, that mournful state of this evening, to ask through Fatima al-Zahra and Hazrat Muhsin alayhim as -salam, to remove any shackles from our souls so we can reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't just let it be another Saturday night. Don't just let it be another way of mourning. Don't just let it be another majlis I attended. Start to write your own chapter. <laughs>